I want to go through multiple wives. Yeah, look, multiple wives. There's multiple wives. Who in here want multiple wives? Only one. Come here. You're the only one you're married. Your brother, brother like to look at their wives. <laughs> but don't put your hand. Don't, don't, yeah, I, I hear you. But don't put your hand because, Lord, I'm tearing now. Don't call me tonight. Sit sit right there. They look like. Yeah, Look, if my wife ain't here, I don't want this. I don't like this. Hey. <laughs> Hell, I don't want no. I don't want no second. Are you crazy? That's heavy. You crazy? Yeah, feel, feel free. Some of the brothers did like this. We want you. We want, we want you, bitch. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know me. I like to be funny. All right, but um, I, I want to answer. Pose it. Well, I'm gonna say something. What scripture? Explains a man having more than one wife. Or uh, it, it appears to be. Only two people Michael, here know? Three people Michael, here? Michael, four people here? That's it? Four people understand it? Five people understand it? I see what? Two, three, four, five people in this whole school have six people. That's it. So only six of you want multiple. The rest of you guys don't know. Back in the day, that question had everybody. <laughs> they had you in the All right, let me go ahead, brother. Help me. Give me one. I know it's future prophecy. Um, Isaiah 4.1. Okay, that's the one you got, Isaiah 4.1. Somebody give me another one. Okay, yeah, give me what you got. Um, microphone, man. Deuteronomy 21 and 15. Deuteronomy 21 and 15. That's what it says? What it says there? <laughs> Talking about future prophecy or? Anyone, eh? Oh, okay. What we want. And we're going to get to uh, uh, Isaiah. That's not it. Oh, a man have two wives, the love one, one hated. Okay, good, good. We can use that one. All right, so I want you to write this down. Write down Isaiah 4, uh, Deuteronomy 21, 15. What's the next one? Somebody's got another one? A bit? 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 2. 1 Samuel 1 and 2. Just write it down. 1 Samuel 1 and 2. What you have, young man? I got the same man raising his hand twice. Who's there raising his hand twice? Um, Who's there raising his hand twice? We got one in Exodus 21 and 10 too. Damn, you studied in that. <laughs> so you studied in that. Is it 21 and what? 21 and what? 21 and 10. You got another one? I give, leave him with the mic. Oh, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Okay, Exodus 21. Your wife ain't even smile. You should see the smile she got on there. She like this. She like this. Look. <laughs> see, let me explain. Um, that was no genuine smile. She like. That's for. No, don't, 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 just, don't, don't, don't trust me. <laughs> just, just, just let it, let it fade. That's the kid that knocks. Let it fade. 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 All right, that's it, that's it. That's it. Okay, I want to explain something about this real quick. Oh, let's do the Exodus, let's do the Exodus. Exodus 21. 21 Exodus. Exodus. Chapter 21, verse 10. Okay, this for all you men that's looking for multiple wives. And all you sisters that want to be a multiple wife. She's like, hell no, not me. Look at this. Hold on, look at this question. Look, look at how you mess. Hold on, look at the question. I just said, who you talking about? How many sisters want to be a multiple wife? <laughs> Damn. There you go. There you go. Once you see, I do it. I'm sick and tired of it. <laughs> she said, whatever the Lord says. That's, yeah, yeah, that's amen. All praise. That's right. That's what I like to hear that. Again, real quick, how many brothers want multiple wives? Really? So Damn, you should be filming it. You can lay hands down. You know what I did? I'm like, I'm like, Judy, raise your hand for me. <laughs> Right, let's explain, dude. Let's go. Exodus 21 and 10. Exodus chapter 10. Hey, look, 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 look,
Yeah, she did. <laughs> Exodus chapter 21, verse 10. We're going to keep it in this context. Watch. If he take him another wife. See? see? There you go. See, if he took another wife. So you both teach you can have one wife. It says if he take another wife. <laughs> That's simple. Read on. Her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. <laughs> okay, I'm going to explain what I did that for. Let's just say it, mean, it doesn't mean what you think it means. And I'm going to explain in a second right there. Let's just say it does mean that. 99.999% of the Negroes that's doing today are not doing that part. Right. They're not doing the second part. Her duty of marriage, her raiment, and whatever else it says should not diminish. They're not doing, that means if you have one, if that's what they're saying, you have one wife, and then you decide you're going to take another wife, that you must commit and do these things. Brothers ain't doing that. How many of y'all want to take on another set of bills? So you want two wives, but you don't want two bills. You niggas wicked as hell. No, Y'all don't want two wives. You want one wife and you want somebody to have sex with. That's what you want. Let's just keep it real. <laughs> also, when they hear a second bill, they're like, I don't sound too sexy anymore. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about all that. Yeah. But let's just spread it. It doesn't mean that anyway. Let's see this. Let's stay right in the same chapter. Let's jump up to verse one. I, let me, can I read for a while? Uh, now what, the reason why I'm staying right here is because I want you to give the context of why he's writing. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt, which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his, then his wife shall go out with him. So now it says, if you buy a Hebrew servant, why would we be buying a Hebrew servant? Somebody, and that doesn't mean a slave, but somebody work for you. Why would somebody have to be bought or sold into servitude? It's because they were poor. We'll read Leviticus, I think it's the 25th chapter in a second, to explain when you went into servitude. It says if you, if you sold yourself into servitude, you worked for six years, and then after that, you must be let, you, they have to let you go. If you came in with your wife, you and your wife work, and then afterwards, you got to let both of them go. Uh, verse f uh, 4. If his master had given him a wife, and she had borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. So now, he came in. And the master allowed him to marry one of the women there. He could go up, but she can't. It could be for the fact that maybe she came in after him and she got to finish serving her servitude. But the point was, you can go, but she had to stay. And the children. Now watch this. Verse 5. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master and my wife and my children, I will not go out, I will not go out free. Then the master shall bring him to the judges, and he shall also bring him to the door, unto the doorpost, and the master shall bore his heir through with an oath, and he shall serve him forever. Now some people will sell themselves into service to him forever. Then, but now mind you, this is an Israelite, but you could not work them with rigor. You couldn't work like a servant, like a slave. So he said, listen, life is good here. Okay, let me go back a little bit, because I'm, I'm trying to... I have to explain something before I explain this. All of us was given plots of land. All of us had a landmark, one in the tribe you were in, and then your family's land. Now, for whatever reason it might have been, your, your, you lost your family's land, or your, fa your father lost it, maybe. Remember, go read. This is about wicked Israel, like some of the stuff we're reading. So there had been laws put into place to suffice the wickedness we were doing. That being said, this man decides he doesn't want to leave for whatever reason this woman is there. He said, okay, I'm going to bore your hole through it all and you're going to serve me. Now watch this. Verse 7. And if the man, and if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. Now watch this. If she please her master who have been, if she please not her master, who hath betrothed who hath betrothed her to himself. Now why wouldn't she go out like the men's servants do? It's after six years, they should be free, right? 
Why couldn't she go out like the men's servants do? I just read it. Go ahead, brother. Just say it out loud. I don't care. The right, the master betrothed her. That's the reason why he couldn't let her go. So he took her as a servant, and then he decided, I want to betroth her. So let's read verse uh, 7. And if a man shall show his daughter to be a maid servant, she shall not go out as men servants do. If she please not her master, who hath betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed. So now, if he betrothed her, but he's like, ah, you know, I'm not really pleased with her. A lot of times at first you're thinking after, we're like, ah, she ain't that long, whatever. It says, you have to allow her to be bought out of her servitude. It says, to sell her unto a strange nation, he shall, not have, he shall have no power. See that he dealt with her, he hath dealt deceitfully with her. So it says, you have to allow her to be redeemed, but you can't sell her off to somebody else. You have to allow, allow somebody to buy her out of that servitude. It says, you got to allow her to be that because you dealt deceitfully with her. So what does it say? That you dealt evilly with the woman. So he betrothed her, but he didn't do what? He did not have what? Make it simple. He did not have sex with her. Now he's looking at her, he's like, eh, I don't know about this. Now mind you, you betrothed her, other men that might have been interested in her can't touch her. And now you're saying you don't want to deal with her. That's evil. Once you are betrothed to a woman, you're locked. Sisters, once you betroth yourself to a man, now, now I'm going to say this, if you was in the world and you came to truth with somebody, that might be different. Because he may not be a believer, that's different. We'll go to that later on today, first Corinthians. But I'm talking about two people in the truth right now. The minute you get betrothed, I hope you understand, if you find that he's an idiot after that betrothal, you just locked him with an idiot. If you find she's a demon, you just locked him with that demon. So she has to commit adultery or he got to drop dead before either one of you are free. Who sucks? Why you take your time? Now watch this. First thing, if she please not her master who hath betrothed her to himself, then he shall let her be redeemed. To sell her to a strange nation, he shall have no power, seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her. And if he hath betrothed her unto his son, now if a master took in a woman, and betrothed her to her son, right? He shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. He got taken and deal with her like his daughter. If he, the master, or the son who betrothed a woman to himself, shall take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall not diminish. So if a man betrothed himself to a woman, and she's not redeemed, nobody redeems her, and you decided you want to move on to somebody else, you dealt deceitfully with her. You still got to maintain her, and you didn't even sleep with her. Do you understand that? This ain't talking about having sex with two women. This is talking about you betrothed to one, you decided you don't want her, and you're like, I want that other one, and she wasn't redeemed, then guess what? You still have to maintain her. So people that use the scripture, I know you hear this a lot about this talking about multiple wives, meaning sleeping with two women, it ain't talking about sleeping with two women, first of all. That's the first thing. Everybody get that? Yes, sir. Okay. Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter. Oh no, no, verse 11. And if she and if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. So now, if he doesn't do these three things, which is because back in the days, they used to teach the duty of marriage was sex. It ain't sex. They were betrothed. Uh, if he, uh, her rape, it says her food, meaning when he was betrothed to her, he had to feed her. So I'm going to tell you, me, brother, when you get betrothed to a woman, you better start preparing yourself that you might have to feed her, clothe her, and make sure she has all that she needs. Before you even deal with her. I was like, I don't, that ain't fair. Well, you said it, it cost to be the boss. You thought it was free, huh? <laughs> sure. Deuteronomy 21. I'm 
I'm going to tell you, a lot of times brothers take, it sounds sensational, they take uh, these, uh, and you get to many other camps, they take the multiple wives doctrine like it's a law and that you must do it. Now we're going to read the Bible, we're going to read about multiple wives, not like it's not in the Bible. But sisters, please, I was, I, I was told a sister earlier today, I'm telling you brothers, this is, I've seen over my years, more than two decades of this truth, multiple wives, and I've never seen it work one time. Not one time have I seen, I, I know people that I've ever seen it work. Because I can guarantee you, when a man is taking a second wife, the, le the, the first thing he ain't thinking about is, well, we're soulmates, and you know, we're gonna have children, and we're gonna serve God, and we're all gonna go to, that's not what he's thinking about. Notice when I asked the man, who wants multiple wives? Everybody, but a lot of them said that. When I said, who wants multiple bills? Ain't nobody raised their hand. <laughs> who wants to stay up all night and be arguing with your wife and be explaining to her and then do it all over with another woman? Are you crazy? Ah, oh, that's just such a turn on. I didn't even think about it. You gotta go, re you gotta try to reteach her, yo. Oh, gosh, that's, that's a tough, forget it. I give up. You joking? I need, I need a, when I need a multiple wife, when her mind is right, and that's the kingdom, I don't gotta be explaining it. But why are you doing that for? Not me. All I gotta do is think about that, and all that good feeling go away. I don't know. For me to have multiple wives, I need multiple personalities. Okay, so where we at? Uh, verse 15, 21 15. Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 15. If a man have two wives. See, see, see right here. It says a man got two wives. What are you brothers teaching? So you brothers are off. It says a man, if a man, if he, if he has two wives. It says two there. <laughs> one beloved and another hated. And see, he got one that he loved and one that he hate. Now what would you hate your wife for? Why would somebody hate their wives? We don't. And they have borne him children. And both of them wives bore him children. You love one, you hate the other one, and they both gave you children. Both the beloved and the hated. Read. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated. And if the firstborn son be of the woman you don't you don't like, you hate her. Then it shall be, when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he had, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated. Now do you see so much in that one verse? You got two wives. What do you love and what do you hate? Why the hell would you hate your wife for? But not even hate your wife, you hate your child. Because your firstborn child is supposed to be your heir. You won't give him his, his inheritance for being your firstborn. You give it for your secondborn child for the one you, you love. So the child of the hated is being punished. What does that tell you about the man? Huh? He's wicked, his spirit ain't right. So this is an example of having two wives. Let's stay in the same chapter, let's see. Uh, 21, verse 1. Exodus, uh, Deuteronomy 21, verse 1. If one be found slain in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it, lying in the field, and it be not known who hath slain him, then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth, and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. So it says, if, if a man, if one be found slain in the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it, laying in the field, and it be not known who hath slain him. Now imagine right now, we sit here, somebody in the bathroom slumped over with a knife in their back. I would come out here and say, hey, there's a brother dead back there. Who in here did that? and nobody says anything. My next question is, who in here saw? And nobody say anything. What does that say? Somebody here is wicked, who did it, or somebody know, and ain't saying nothing, right? <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Watch this, go to Durabi, hold this, Durabi 27 verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 24. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say, Amen. Do 
understand what Moses had him say this for? He said, cursed is the man that killed his neighbor secretly. And everybody's supposed to say what? You don't want to say amen what they say? So let it be. Moses is making you confirm your soul that you know he's that, that man is wicked or you. So imagine the one who actually did it. Everybody say amen? And you just committed a murder. Oh it was shit. Him. Yeah. Because you understood back then when you said amen, you understand you was signing a bond with God. You said amen, you just cursed your soul. Were we to marry the other nations? Oh, Moses said in Deuteronomy at the sixth chapter, isn't it? Or the fourth chapter? Seven. Seventh chapter. We wasn't supposed to marry the enemies, other nations. Here he's telling you that if you do take them, you got to go through these protocols. You got to pay her nails or whatever. Now, why would they want? You understand? It says, read verse 10. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemy. You understand? When they went to war, it wasn't like they, like we talk about today, you know, we used to right here. Hey, listen. Hey, babe, I'm about to go to war. I'll be back about 4.30 for dinner. <laughs> You know, when you went for war, you went for war. Sometimes you lay sieges for years, for months. You out for war. They out there. They out there in the middle of nowhere, running around, lifting, pushing, jumping, doing whatever they're doing, killing. Testosterone's up, and guess what? Men. No woman. There's no woman. Now they were supposed to contain themselves, but come on, let's be real. Now Moses has to write a law. Because now you're going to deal with a heathen woman, which you weren't supposed to be dealing with. We read that back in Deuteronomy 7. He said, but if you do go and you do this, take the woman, man, pin her nail, take her, look at you. And then afterwards, if you don't like her, you get rid of her, but you can't sell her. Man, you then humble the woman. Were we supposed to be in the first place, take the woman? No. Was it supposed to be murder in the first place and nobody knows about it? No. Okay then, verse 15. Verse 15, if a man have two wives... One be loved and another hated. So that, don't you understand this whole chapter is talking about things we weren't supposed to be doing? No killing, but get away from it. Ain't supposed to marry the heathen nations. It's the, Moses had to write all these laws down because of the hardness of our hearts, the way we operated. So he said, these niggas ain't going to listen. So damn it, they kill somebody, how do we solve it? We can't figure out what it is. Write this law of Moses for them so they can wash their hands of the blood or whatever. Oh man, they go to war, we're supposed to marry them. Right, write this law of Moses, just don't, don't kill. But that's why Moses said, I, I'm doing these people, they're covered. He said, I wish they were all the prophets, because these niggas don't listen. He had to write law. That's why Christ came back and said what he said. He said, if, they had not, if I had not come, they would have had a cloak for their sins. And the biggest cloak was going to be what? How to deal with the women. This is except she accepted fornication. You can't get rid of her. We'll read that in a second. So back here it says, here, uh, verse two, two uh, verse 15, if you had two wives, one you love, one you hate. That so far the, the scripture we read about multiple wives, one thing said it's two. It don't sound too good here, because if you hate somebody, you're a murderer. It don't sound like, you know, these aren't the precepts that will kind of convince me that it's harmonious. Anybody follow? Now Solomon and um, David, they had multiple wives. Solomon had 300, forget about the concubine, he had 300 wives. What was wrong with that? What was wrong with Solomon having 300 wives? They let him astray. Well, no, I ain't, ain't going to deal with the concubines. Oh, well, yeah, it could have been some of his wives that went astray too. Uh, the law of Deuteronomy uh, chapter 17, the king cannot multiply his Deuteronomy 17, that's it? Let's go to it. Deuteronomy 17, 15. Oh, no, 17, 17. 17, 17? Yes, straight to the point. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 17. Neither shall he multiply wives. Start so, so with verse 15. Let's read that point. Verse 15. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. Okay, read. Verse 17. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself. Neither shall the king multiply wives to themselves. So you people say, well, see, Solomon, had, well, the scripture said they weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> the law. Again, I don't know how you going to try to sell that multiple wives stuff, but here's another example where it wasn't... 
they were in keeping the law. Watch this. Okay, let, let's do let's do First Samuel. I think that's the only one. Wait, who is who? It wasn't a, was it the priest? First time you won a bit? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, read it. First Samuel chapter one, verse one. Now there was a certain man of Ramoth uh, Ramothazophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jehoam, and the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zu, and e an Ephratite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had no had children, but Hannah had no children. So this is the only scripture that we read where I can recall where a man had two wives. Now what do you see kind of with this? You anybody see anything here? Let me see if anybody's thinking. Okay. I want you to hold this right here. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Genesis 17, somewhere around there. <laughs> uh, watch this. I want, uh, no. 16, that's it. Uh, Genesis chapter 16 verse 4 and he went in unto Hagar now go a little higher start with verse 1 verse 1 now Sarah Abram's wife bare him no children and she had an handmaid an Egyptian whose name was Hagar and Sarah said unto Abram uh, behold now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing I pray thee go in unto my maid stop so Sarah couldn't survive. Sarah, she couldn't have any children. So she said, listen, go into my maid and go deal with her. Have sex with her. And she bared him Ishmael. Now when you get a chance to read this, when Sarah finally had a child, she said, kick that chick out and that child. And Abram had no problem. Like, Whatever, I don't really don't care anyway. And he kicked out. Abram kicked out. So when you get a chance to read it for yourself, this Hagar wasn't of the people. She was not of the nation of Israel. He said, uh, Sarah was like, Hagar thought, I guess, must thought she was special because she had his child. She said, I don't want this woman around no more. Now, this is the woman that had his child. She said, kick her and the child out. Was Abraham a godly man? Absolutely. Abraham said, whatever. You got to go. You got to go and put them out. Now, he took Hagar. Why? Why did he deal with Hagar? Just say it. Let's go back to what we read in Samuel. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 2. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah. And the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children. But Hannah had no children. So that, wouldn't it, you understand now? Was Abraham supposed to really deal with Hagar like that? No, but he didn't have no, she didn't have no children. Could this be the same case here? That he had another woman because the first one wasn't bearing no children? Remember, you had to keep your seed alive. You understand what men? Men want men children because they keep our seed alive, our name alive. You have girl children, she's going to carry seed for another man. So for men, it was imperative, especially when you have land, they had to keep the legacy and the land going. You needed the land. This is the only example you read two wives, but once again, there was something in there. One couldn't have a child, just like Hagar and Wesley. Okay, so let's go from there to um, um, Isaiah 4. Watch this. Isaiah 4 and 1. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. That's what we're holding on for. That's, how many sisters have that scripture from your husband? Ah. Call Robbie. Ooh, you got FaceTime. I'm going to FaceTime Robbie right now. Hold on. I'm going to ask you. I think you're lying. I'm going to ask Robbie. I'm going to ask you. I'm sorry. I got FaceTime for this day. You guys love me, man. I did this. Let me 
what's that, what's that game show I used to call? <laughs> that game show recently? So you want to be a millionaire? Yeah. 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 So you want to be a millionaire? Or they call a person. Phone a friend? Phone a friend. Phone a Phone a friend. Phone a Phone a Lord. Ah, oh, you lucky he ain't answering. Oh, yeah, I leave you alone. You love you. Anyway, how many sisters, how many, Jerry, you sisters, married, unmarried, have you heard the scripture before? That's okay. So let's see what's, let's, let's read it. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. How many, how many brothers like the scripture? <laughs> Ella Dad just got married. He's looking down. He wanted to live up his head. He wanted to live He's in that he was like, listen, he had it like this, he's like, I, he's like, don't say, don't say, I ain't answered that. This thing is new, hell no. <laughs> Marriage feast last week, council this week, hell no, I ain't answered that. I hate you, brother, smart, don't even look up. It ain't worth it, trust me, it ain't worth it. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So that's the scripture we read about multiple wives. It says that day seven women shall hold on to one man. We're gonna keep it in this time period. This is talking about in the siege in Jerusalem. Now scriptures could be twofold. Don't, don't misinterpret. Could be twofold. But who said they was gonna take? It said seven women's gonna take hold of one man. Now, any seven women grab on to you, that means you're gonna take them? Look at you. It'd be seven busted broads. Nah, I, I don't want you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you. There'd be seven dime pieces. Be, I, 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 trust me, they're going run in the head. <laughs> be seven dimes. He crazy. And he's seven. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> me, man. Don't let me call Paul Young. <laughs> So, we read it, but it doesn't say that you're going to take it. Now, prophecy-wise, we know that just like back then, it's going to happen again, that we're going to have the siege, there's going to be problems, there's going to be distress, and women are going to be looking for the prophets of God because we are going to be scarce in the earth. God is going to kill off two-thirds of the people. All the wicked men, all the women of the wicked men, they're going to die off, and they're going to turn ooh, to the prophets of God. Because God's spirit is going to be upon you and you're going to have God's hedge around you. So naturally, people are going to cleave to you. These sisters without no man, because they died or whatever, they said, God must be with them. I'm going to cleave on to you. Well, you can cleave if you want to get the word. But I ain't taking no seven busted broads. You bust, I give you scriptures all day. <laughs> well, I got to marry you. Nah. Not me. Well, I ain't told you that day, when that day come. I ain't even coming. I'm going to an island. I'm going to, get, I'm going to fly into island, get off the plane. I'm going to get off that plane. I'm going to take the bus to the next city. Then I'm going to take the train to the next city. Then I'm going to take that donkey and ride that donkey until that donkey drop down. Then I'm going to take a boat. I'm going to find that chick way out there. Out there, she ain't, she ain't even know the word America. That's going to be the one. And you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go so far in the interior of your <laughs> She had a loin club right there. A freaking basket on her head, and she can lift that basket and me. Take me back to the shoulder. <laughs> Put me in the basket on her neck. Carry me back. We should run over there too about the Proverbs 31 woman. You know, do the one to go to this class today about the Proverbs 31 woman. So he said, Can I start putting together? So I started this morning. And it was supposed to be a, a, a class today, maybe two weeks, to exhort you, sisters. Because we got some righteous women. I don't think all women's bad. But anyway, when I start putting the scriptures together, I thought I can't teach this class today. I said, because damn, it started off good, but it didn't end up good. <laughs> My class was turning real bad. I said, they're gonna be depressed if I finish this class today. So that's why the class changed. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, right. Uh, let's go to Matthew's 19. We're gonna end it on this one with this. Hold up, let me say something right here, yeah. real quick. Just for the brothers. Because we'd be worried about the, the future prophecy part of it. Remember it says seven women should plead to one man, right? Let's go to the chapter before that and read verse 24. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 24. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, 
there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a gird of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Then man shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war, and her gate shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Now like Bishop said, now the men that fell by the sword, they all jacked up. The siege is going on, ain't no food coming in, they can't get the oil, they can't get the garments, their hair is falling out, they stink, they can't wash up. Now read. And oh, that? <laughs> just, Ella died. I want you. I want to clean one to <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> and, look, and look, she's smacking her head, but ain't no weed right there. Dirt, critters crawling all on her. <laughs> be my, I'm gonna put you be my lord. <laughs> and in that day, seven women. In that day, the day that them women, the bald head scallywags, have been going through hell, shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. How many of y'all want them, Sam? Oh. <laughs> I'll save you before you do it. I'll save you before you do it. But you know, this brother's knows another camp. They'll take him. They'll take him in a heartbeat. You know why? Because she said, I will eat up my own bread and wear my own apparel. That means you're going to take care of me? Yeah, I'm going to take care of you. You can take care of me. If I got seven of you and seven of you got food and clothes, I'm good. I can I play video games all day. Mm. All right. So so far, I mean, if you notice, if you notice the precepts on the doctrine that they teach the multiple wives, you can poke holes all through that stuff. They'll put, I'll make them leak. I said, they're not gonna put me with the scriptures. I said, that pull, pull the ones you want. Show me which one was harmonious. Show me one. Does it mean that we're not gonna have them? No, because Isaiah four could be um, uh, uh, twofold. We know because it's going to be the same thing that's going to happen in the last days of this, this earth. But, and not that most women are unrepentant women that want to change, but they're going to change under distress and duress. Doesn't mean that you're going to take all seven of them. It ain't there. But they teach this as though it's doctrine that you offer if you tell my brother. Listen, we just read, show me a good example. And there's one more. One that, there's another one in there. I don't remember where it's at about it, but it, doesn't say, I'm just not sure about that. All right, I want to read something in Matthew 19, I'm gonna end up about marriage. My brother's in the truth. Um, verse eight, uh, verse seven. Matthew chapter 19, verse seven. They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorce and to put her away? So that's, they're asking him, cause we read up early in, in, uh, in the scripture, it says, uh, they said, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every, uh, for every cause? If it, is it lawful or in God's eyes for a man to put away his wife for every or for any cause? No, it's not. Except fornication. And that fornication means she stepped outside of the marital bed. And that don't mean she just slept with another dude. If she kissed another guy, anything that a husband and wife would do, if she do with somebody else, she broke that bond of matrimony. You understand that, right? So, if she did anything with a guy that would make you upset, you understand? Then she broke that. That's fornication. When I say upset, you gotta be sexual. You understand what I'm trying to say, right? Everybody understand? Not, you know, she played Uno with him and you got mad. <laughs> See, I knew I could get out of it. No, nigga. It says, then why did Moses give the writing, a bill of writing divorcement? What does it say next? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart. He said, Moses wrote those bills of divorcement in Deuteronomy 23rd or 4th chapter. Which one is it? 24th? 24th. Yeah. Okay, Deuteronomy 24 1. He said, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart. Remember, in Deuteronomy 21, what we read about two wives hating one, hating another. When you read those chapters, he said, Moses, because he had to write this law that you could divorce because of Exodus 21. Deuteronomy 21. Because you all was wicked as hell is why Moses had to write the laws. 
Imagine a dude going around betrothing woman after woman after woman after woman after, and not marrying none of them. He betrothed all, every one of you got betrothed by him. You got 50 women that's, that can't never get married. What happened? 50 women turned to 50 whores. 50 women never get to bear children. Bo said, I gotta write that law, cause these, these dudes is just, you know, you scoop up quick. Y'all, let's get patrol. You know, you get patrol. You minds, you minds too. And you find brothers in the truth doing that. You find brothers in the truth doing that. Meet sisters and automatically try to get them patrol. Lock them down. And then the sister fall for it and end up sick later on. Realize he's a retard. Do you understand, real quick, brother, before you say, do you understand, sisters, you can get betrothed to a man, and a man could decide, you know what? I'm never going to sleep with you because I'm turning my life over to Jesus fully. And you live the rest of your life betrothed and never can see a man. The only way you can see a man unless he died or you play the whore. <laughs> We're going to read that in a second, too. And you like, well, I thought going to get betrothed if he's going to have a family. He's like, oh, no, I decided that the spirit of God is on me. I don't want to have sex. I want to be like Paul. You better ask questions. Yeah. Now, as far as uh, being betrothed, um, the proof of being betrothed, is, was there supposed to be an instrument of writing or was it supposed to be just before the council? Well, but the, but the, but the instrument of writing is when you actually consummate, when you're going to consummate the matter. The betrothal was really between the father and that man. So he would go to the father or uh, whoever the elder man of her family is and ask for a hand. They would go in agreement because if you went into a vow, like say, I'll give you an example. My daughter, Jada, she ain't crazy because she's out, pistol out. She, 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 you know she would have to be, I'll tell this whole place up there. <laughs> anyway, if she was crazy enough to, to tell me, me and so and so got the trough, at the moment that I heard that, I could disannul that. I got some stuff to explain about the stuff now. I could, I said, hell no, you're not. You could break that vow. Father could break that vow. Husband could break vows too. You could break the vow. But if I heard it, and I didn't do anything about it, I left it alone, then it stands. I explained that in a second too. Okay, let me first finish dealing with this one. No, let me do that first. Numbers, where's the file? 30. Let me deal with it, I'm gonna forget. I see, I see Asha looked at me like, where's that at? You never heard that before, Asha? Yes, I was looking at your moment you had. Oh. <laughs> okay, Numbers 30, what verse is that? I'm not there. Verse four. No, it's chapter thirty, verse. No, no, it's th that's, that's, no. I want a father. Verse three. Number three. No, it's chapter thirty, verse three. If a woman also vow a vow, a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth. And her father hear her vow, and her bond, wherewith she have bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her. Then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she have bound her soul shall stand. Read. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she have bound her soul shall stand, and the Lord shall forgive her, because her father disallowed her. So do you understand that? So she bound herself, vowed herself, and made a bond of betrothal, and I hear her, I'm like, no. It's broken. It's broken. If I hear, and I don't do anything about it, then that vow and that bond stands. So, back to the vow standing of betrothal. You all, I'm telling you something, you all better be so, you said people better be so careful when I say, and I feel more for you sisters than I do for the brothers. But even your brothers, you better be careful. Because I know somebody who, well, that's the story. He got, trust me, it's the, it's the, it better be, it is going to be the greatest 
mess you're going to make in your life. Because who's born to you is born to you. Who your parents told you, who you choose is who you choose. And damn, that is suck. If you choose, I know a brother chose a wife, and after they got married, he said, he called me and said, yo, she crazy. I said, what you mean, what happened? He said, yo, I got on Facebook, and she, I saw me send a message to her about I love her. He said, and I didn't send it. He said, she locked into my Facebook page, said, I love you, and then went to her page and wrote herself back. I am lying, because I love you too. He said, oh, snap. <laughs> he said, first, I don't know how she got on my Facebook, how she got the thing, but he said, I wasn't hiding, but she wrote, he said, I'm reading a message from me to her, and he said, I, I, I ain't been on Facebook for weeks. <laughs> so she crazy, so he said, one day he woke up, and she was standing over him. <laughs> you think I'm lying? And he said, he said, he's lady, he said, damn, she went this. He said, he's scared. And like, cause like she was down, he said, he said, and the way she talked, he said, I don't think I could have took her either. Cause she was big, he said, I don't think I could have took her. He said, I just laid there, like what? Matthew chapter 19 verse 8 he said unto them Moses because of the hardness of your hearts suffered you to put away your wives but from the beginning it was not so so in the beginning so all the stuff you read back then about taking strangers wives we was, it was not so uh, divorce it was not so betrothed women not that it was not so and all this stuff was Moses had to write this thing because we was out of order but Christ came back to correct and said, no more of that. Read on. Verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. The only reason you can get rid of her would be fornication. And shall marry another. And then you decide you want to be with somebody else. Committed adultery. You committed a sin. Now, isn't that sound similar to what we read in Exodus 20? And you dealt with her deceitfully. This one you actually married to. But that one, you was betrothed to, which is still marriage, but you didn't sleep with her. But you had her, you didn't want her no more, and you took another one. It says, you had to let her go because you dealt with her deceitfully. Here, you have one you sleep with, you don't want her, and then you go to another one. Christ is saying the same thing here. He said, you dealt with her deceitfully. You've committed adultery. You're bound to her. She didn't do anything wrong. I mean, she didn't sleep with nobody else. She could have been a demon. She could have been worshipped Baal, Bacchus, whatever she, well, not Bacchus, because you guys, you know what I'm saying? She could be worshipped other God. She could be whatever, celebrate Christmas. Whatever she's doing. Unless she sleeps with somebody else, you stuck with her. And if you decide you're going to move on, you commit adultery. Read on. And, and, you, and then if she sleeps with somebody else, she committed adultery, and a man slept with her committed adultery, and it's all your fault. Sucks. You know. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. His disciples say unto him. Now his disciples are the twelve, the righteous men. If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. Read again. His disciples say unto him. If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. This is, if this be the case, that the only way you can get rid of the woman if she commit adultery, well, damn, maybe it's better not to marry. You understand what they say? They're saying, there's so many problems in marriages, deal with somebody that, if that's the only reason I can get rid of her, then damn, maybe I should never get married in the first place. So when you put two, and these are godly men saying this, ain't no wicked man saying it. So when you put two people together, you are making the greatest calculated, that's what it says, if you have a daughter, you marry her, you, you, it's a weighty matter. You're taking two people with two different spirits 
and you tell them they gotta live together forever, and they gotta mesh and be as one spirit. I know it sounds the two be one. That sounds good on paper, but when you gotta make that happen, listen, shh. There could be a whole lot of reason why I can't stand her guts, other than she ain't a whore. She ain't that. But there's a lot of the stuff I don't really like about her. You stuck. So I would advise you, single woman, if you come to a point or you want to get betrothed to a man, a brother here, here's one thing you should do. Start an argument. Start an argument. See how you handle it. See if he's going to use his scriptures or he's going to turn into a stupid nigga. You met? What do you do? Before you betroth? It's both you see counsel. Try to command her and see if she's going to allow herself to be ruled. Y'all be picking because, and everybody, I mean, at this stage of the game, nobody's stupid. Everybody put their best foot forward. Are we, we, man, we gonna say whatever you want us to say. You crazy? We, we know what we after. You want to say whatever? I say that. Yeah, man, I love you. Poach you, whatever you yeah. <laughs> See, we wherever you want us to be. Please. It's not. A, it's not until all that stuff get worn off. You ain't gonna know nobody until they get tried. That's why you can't talk about you. People talk about they get they get married. They been talking for a couple months. They ready to get married? But are you crazy? <laughs> How that? You rolling dice? That's like go see with a chick with no condom. You just met her. Yeah, let's. Let's see how it works out. I could be whatever you want me to be for five months. Trust me. If I really like you, I'll be whatever you want me to be for five months. Five years? Hell no. <laughs> I'm out. Deuces. Take your time. Accept to be for fornication. It says, his disciples said to him, if, this, if the case of man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. He said, damn. Well, then, uh, maybe it's better to be single. Read on Verse 11, but he said unto them, all men cannot receive the same. Now Christ came back and said, that sounds good, but all men do not have the spirit to stay single. There's some men who, and I can tell you, I haven't met that person yet. But there's some men that God will put his spirit upon them that they can refrain from women for a lifetime. If there's a brother with that spirit, God is dealing with you on levels far beyond you're like, a, you're like an alien to me. I would just, if I, if I ever met you, I would like this to you. Because I know, I'm like, who is this special person? I'm going to pull your shirt and see if you got wings. Something got to be special about you that you got that. It says, not every man can, so some man may say they can do it. Oh, I can, ref, I can refrain myself. Negro, please. Are you serious? Oh, some sister told me that before. Are you Mary Magdalene? Are you serious? Yeah, sure. Sure, it says not all men can receive the same, meaning it's a gift from God. I haven't met a man like that. And they, I'm not saying they're not out there, I just haven't met him yet. All the ones that I thought was the ones, they're not even the truth. <laughs> the truth First Corinthians, the 7th uh, chapter, is it? We're going to wrap it up right now. First Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 32. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord. How he may please the Lord, but he that is married carries for the things that are of the world. How he may please his wife. And that's what all men, what we do, we want to please the woman we are, we're with. So we care about the things. They become important. But those without wives, they care for the things of the Lord. Their business is the Lord's business. So if you have that spirit, then God is dealing with you on a whole other level. Read on. Verse 33. But he that is married carries for the things that are of the world. How he may please his wife. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely and that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. So Paul was telling that without a wife or without a husband, you could attend unto the Lord without, a, without distraction. When you're married, you gotta care about the things that your spouse needs or wants. We don't. Uh, verse 36. 36, but if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin. But if a man thinks that he behaveth himself uncomely or wrong towards his virgin, meaning his betrothed, 
If she passed the flower of her age, and she grows old and she hits menopause, and needs so required, and needs so required, meaning he so feel like he want to have sex, let him do what he will. Make him start dealing with his wife. Read on. He sinneth not. He does not sin. Do you understand, sisters, that you can be betrothed with a man and he don't want to have sex with you, and as soon as you you get old and you pass menopause, you're like, eh, no, go to have sex now. He's had that sin. So you could be 20 years old, be Trump, and that dude, for the next 35 years, decided, you know, I don't feel like it. And now you're 70, and he said, you know what? I'm in the mood now. <laughs> it said, he sinneth not. So sisters, I would advise you, you better ask these, you better ask these questions. So how long before you think we will contemplate uh, do you want children? You know, you better ask these hard-hitting questions. Now, on the flip side, women, you can't do that to the man. If he betrothed you, you can't tell him, oh, um, I think I want to wait. No, it doesn't say that. So the man, if he decides to. You sisters understand that? Yeah, like, whatever. Ain't nothing for you. They're disconnected. So you sisters understand it? If you're single and a man decides to, you have to get married then? <laughs> ah, this is terrible. Yeah, okay. Let's go on. Brothers, you understand it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a light. Over there, they just keep on looking like... Act like I don't hear. Read on. Verse 37. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity. That man who stands steadfast in the spirit, having no need. But hath power over his own will. He can control his own will. That's why I said that's a special spirit. He got power of his own will. And have and have so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin doeth well. He keeps his heart, he will keep his virgin, he's doing well. He has a spirit upon him. So then, he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. He that keep, he that doeth, it says, so then he that giveth her in marriage, decides you want to sleep with her, you do well. But he that, what? But he that giveth her not in marriage do better. Why? Because he could attend her to the Lord with no distraction. Read on. Verse 39. The wife is bound by the law. Listen, sisters, this is for you. The what? The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. Do you understand the scripture says that you are bound by the law as long, you're bound by the law as long as that man is alive. So, like the situation with Abigail and the ball. The ball was an idiot. She was bound to him as long as he was alive. It don't matter what he did. She could not move on. The only time you free is when he's dead and you can't kill him. <laughs> I don't care what he, it don't matter what he's doing. As long as he has a heartbeat, he could be in a coma. But Lord, that heart is still beating. You're stuck. Pull the plug. <laughs> now you can do that too. You can say, do not, he can put, he put do not still resuscitate on him. I don't see you walk by and kick the plug out. <laughs> Who knows a mistake? It says, the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she's at liberty to marry to whom she will, only in the Lord. But now he's dead, you can turn it up. You can marry with some of over here smiling. Some of you watch me like, uh, <laughs> uh, like yeah. Love for it. It says you can marry who you want as long as he's dead, but you have to remarry in the Lord. You can't marry some dude, the high school sweetheart. You gotta marry in the Lord. He must be in the truth. Put a whole different perspective on marriage now, right? Hope you all pay attention. Which one?
which one you want more multiple wives? Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.